Hello friends, this is Oli from Product Analytics Academy, and today I'm going to give you a detailed breakdown of how to build and interpret a retention report, just like the one you see on the screen right now, in Mixpanel. Everything in this video, after this brief intro, is taken directly from a lesson in the Ultimate Product Analytics course, which is a course we offer on our site and have linked to in the video description. So if you like it, head on over to our website and give it a try. Enjoy. All right, now we are on to retention reports, another very useful kind of report. You can find it over here under the reports dropdown at the bottom where we had insights and funnels as well. And it looks like this when you are on the blank version of it. And we're going to be using the same media project data as before, the demo data that comes with Mixpanel. The retention report is admittedly not used as frequently as insights and funnels, which are generally speaking the two features that are used the most when it comes to reporting. However, retention is very useful in the few use cases that it, you do come across for it. And it can be a little bit tricky when you look at it at first. The, the view of the report is a little bit unusual compared to the others that are simple charts, but with just a little bit of guidance, it'll become really easy to understand as well. And that's what we're gonna do here. As the report's name suggests, it lets you track user retention over time. Now, retention can be tracked a few different ways, but the way the mix panel does it is using two events, which is why you see these two empty slots over here. The retention report uses these two events to show you how many people did the first one and then came back to do the second one in subsequent periods of time. Before talking any further about this, let's just create one and see how that looks. In this case, I'm going to use sign up as my first event and I'm going to use watching a video as the second one. Looks a little bit weird at first. Don't worry about it. I'm going to adjust the date ranges and make this easier to understand. I'm going to make it be three months and instead of daily, which generally isn't very useful, I'm going to do weekly. Awesome. All right. This looks a little bit better. Now I know that you probably look at something like this and are like, what the hell is going on? Well, don't worry about it. That is exactly what I'm here to explain to you. As I mentioned before, these two events are what are used to generate this chart. What you see at each of these rows at the very beginning is the number of people who did the first action during that time period. We set this up to be weekly, so this says the week that starts with this date range, we had this many people that signed up. The following week, this many, and so on. So these show you the count of the first event during that period. And then notice how at the top of each column, we had a number of weeks starting out with less than one week and going out. And this little description over here essentially explains what we're trying to look at here. It's the number of people who did action A, like the first one, and then X and more weeks later, your users came back and did B, the second action. So what this is telling you is that 1,524 people have signed up, and this is showing the percentage at each of these subsequent periods that came back and watched a video. As you would expect, the more time that goes by, fewer and fewer people come back because generally speaking, users churn and so your retention, the further down the line you look at it, the lower it's going to be. You can compare first week retention among all of these different cohorts going down, or you can pick one individual cohort and look at how its retention changes week by week. Now there's one really important thing that you have to understand about these. And that is when we say, for example, that 82% showed up under week one for this cohort, that does not mean that 82% of this group came back and watched a video in week one. It means that percent came back and watched a video within week one or a later point in time. Notice what it says here. It says X and more weeks later, the user came back and did action B. This might feel a little bit weird and unintuitive at first, but this is how retention is always measured. For example, when we say that, hey, our product's 30-day retention is 25%, we don't mean how many people came back exactly 30 days after sign up and did something. We mean what percentage of people are still around after 30 days? 
So they could come back 45 days later. They could come back 80 days later. As long as it's after the 30-day point, they count as a user that has retained at the 30-day mark. And this is what the chart here displays as well. So over here, when we say week three retention, if someone has come back after sign up in this cohort, five weeks after sign up and done something, they still show up as week three retention, but they don't show up under week six retention. So again, this shows you how many people came back and did something at this week or any of the ones after that, not the ones before, but that week and the ones that come after that. And that's why it says over here, X and more weeks later, your users came back and did B. Again, this might feel a little bit weird, but this is how retention is generally calculated. You can change this to mean this is how many people came back and did this exactly this week by coming over here and changing on or after to on, in which case your numbers will look a lot more weird, <laughs> as you can see here. It's like one week you get a lot and it drops, goes down, sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. It's a little bit weird because patterns of behavior can vary a lot from week to week and it's just harder to get information out of this. In this case, you could just randomly pick one of these weeks where your numbers look good and go, hey, uh, actually our week two retention was 77.83, but it's like, yeah, just for this cohort, for this cohort, it was way lower. But if you go back and switch it to on or after, which is how it was by default, and where it shows you essentially how many people came back and did something at some point or later, then your numbers become a lot more balanced and a lot more easy to understand. And this is how retention is generally reported. So that's the main tricky thing about retention reports to understand. The first action is what uses... The first action is what Mixpanel uses to bucket your users, to cohort them. So this shows how many people have done action one in this period of time. And then these show how many people came back at different time periods or later and did action two. So you can either select a specific point like week two and go down the line seeing how the retention has changed for that specific week or you can pick one bucket and go down the row and see how retention changes for them. So looking at some examples here, we see that here on February 10th, we have a larger cohort than usual. I think it's, it's the biggest one that we have, maybe second biggest after this, but the retention is lower than the others. That could be because this week there was some sort of promo or something and it brought in a lot of low intent users and low intent users, while they signed up, they didn't really retain very long term. And that's why we see something like this. The converse of that could be when you have fewer people it's like okay like this is a the week of round new year so people maybe weren't thinking about signing up for a new product so all the people who came by were high intent and so they had a pretty good retention going down the line so you can see how something like this would be very valuable for example if you see that week three is where you see the most drop off for all of your cohorts like going from week three to week four then maybe after three weeks, you should send an automated email to every user, giving them a promo or something that makes them come back to the product and use it more. And that's what improves your retention number. Retention is generally a very, very good indicator of how useful your product is and how much users got value out of it. And that's why investors typically ask about it a lot and something that is shown a lot on the KPI dashboards for a business. This is why Mixpanel has retention report as a particular type available for you. The chart that you see at the top over here is basically just these average retentions that is averaging all of these cohorts for each week displayed as one big chart. So if you want to see a summary, you don't want to look at all of these. You just want to see on average how people have retained weekly. Just look at that and look at the chart at the top. Another cool note here is that just like the insights and funnels report, you can change the date range or you can use filters and breakdowns to compare retention between different groups. For example, here I'm gonna break down by gender. I'm gonna see how retention changes between the genders that I have available and I'm tracking my products. So we have these three genders available. You can compare, generally they look to be performing the same. In case I wanna look at it a little bit deeper, can drop them down each and see how they look when compared to one another. They show up on the chart as well. In this case, because they're pretty much the same, 
They're just essentially overlapping lines, but you can see how something like this would be very useful if you had a property that did break down your users in a way where they behave differently from one another. And that wraps up retention reports. Like I said, this report is not as useful as insights and funnels typically, like you use it less often, but when you do use it, it does give you some really, really valuable insights. So in most cases, like each product is maybe one or two of retention reports while they have quite a few of the other ones, but those one or two end up being very, very valuable for them. And that's why it's important for you to learn these just like you learn the rest. And again, just like insights and funnels, you can copy the URL, you can save it to a dashboard. And that covers retention.